My name is Xavier and welcome to the Banner Saga. At long last, I've decided to play this game. I cannot even count how many people have asked me to play it over the ages. And I just didn't have much interest in it based on the graphics. But then I took a little bit of time to look into it. And it's amazing. It's like a, a story-driven role-playing experience that takes place over three games, kind of like the Mass Effect. It's based on Vikings, which is fantastic. I have like half the things on my channel. And then lastly, it has turn-based tactical combat a la XCOM uh, during all the fighting things. So it's actually really, really super interesting. I played it for just a few minutes here. Banner Saga 3 comes out in, <clears throat> I think, four to five days. I think it's the 26th. So, and each one of uh, number one and number two are about 10 hours long. So maybe if I played four hours a day, I might be caught up for the release of Banner Saga 3. Uh, we'll see. I want to play quite a bit here. It's actually really awesome. I love the art style. Thanks, everyone who suggested it over the ages of empires that I ignored you. I'm very happy to jump into it now, though. So let's go into a new game. Story in Banner Saga changes based on the choices you make. You will occasionally switch between lead characters, witnessing the story unfold from different perspectives. Again, it's going to be a little slow to start out uh, before we get into the combat. got to go through the tutorial and some other stuff. So the, the really awesome combat probably won't take place for like an hour or something, but... The gods are dead. In their wake, man and giant survived through a tenuous alliance, driving black destroyers called Dredge... Oh, called Dredge deep into the northern wastes. Now is an era of growth and trade. Life goes on. It has been several long months on the road. The first signs of snowfall accost us on our approach to Strand, largest of the trade cities on the Val human borders, and our last collection before returning to the capital. Several days ago, the sun simply came to a stop in the sky. Though during these long winter days, none of us can be certain how long it has been this way. Some of the men in the caravan have taken it as a dire omen. I am not quick to superstition, but I myself will be glad to be done with this year's rounds. We have been warned by stranded travelers about brigands on the path through Richhorn, our road home. Our captain seems unconcerned. Perhaps he is as eager as I to be done here. We will rest here this day and inquire further when we speak to the governor. Look how small all these little humans are compared to us. We're like big giants, like twice as tall. Tacticals. It's gonna be a pretty simple tacticals because it's just a tutorial. You just arrived. Oh wait, you've arrived just in time. The chieftain in red and his men are now looking at the tougher fight than they bargained for. Drag around the screen to see your surroundings. Click the check mark to continue. Uh, you guys notice up there we got a polar bear in chains, just like Manic in Rimworld. Absolutely awesome. These portraits show the order of initiative, taking turns from left to right. Your allies are blue, enemies are red. So it's blue, red, blue, red, blue, red, blue, red. Very good. Movement happens before action. The ring shows your shield banger. Shield banger is active. The blue tiles around him show where he can move. Some characters fill more tiles than others. Yeah, because we we fill four tiles because we're ginormous. The horned allies are a race of giants called Varl, who take up four tiles each, while humans fill a single tile. This can have a huge impact on your strategy. 
click on the tile you want to move to, then click the check monarch to confirm. Woo! I like how you thump over there. That's awesome. To target enemy, click on the tile in which they stand. Fantastic. You can choose either to attack the enemy's strength or break his armor. Armor's blue, strength is red, it would seem. The numbers beneath each icon show the damage we will do to that stat. Strength counts as both health and damage. That's very important because as someone gets weaker, they then do less damage. A loss of two strength means you'll now do two less damage. If strength falls to zero, the character falls in battle. Armor blocks strength damage, but can be reduced by a break attack. By breaking armor, you open them up to take more damage in the future. Sunmi only has five strength remaining. A strength attack will kill him. Click the fist now to attack in the strength. And confirm! Thud. He's down. Each time you make a kill, your renown grows, which is used later to improve your characters. Wonderful. If you're taking an action, your turn ends. Next up is the enemy. Turns always alternate, even if you are outnumbered. That's very, very interesting. This is just a different take on a lot of the tactical games I've played before. Despite being at full strength, the Chieftain will do little damage against your shield bearing this high armor. <laughs> now it's your Warhawk's turn. He appears to be out of range of these enemies, but all characters can use Willpower to boost their actions. Willpower is a limited resource, so use it wisely. By clicking on the gold tile, a character can move further than usual at the cost of one Willpower per gold tile. Red pulsing tiles beneath your enemies show how close you'll have to get to be in range. Yep, so right right here I wouldn't be in range, there I would be. Move to the Warhawk into attack range now. I'm using two of my willpower to do that. Standard attacks only affect a single enemy, but your Warhawk has a special ability that gives him a unique advantage. Pick your Warhawk's tile to access his ability. Begin the character's tile will bring up all of his combat options, including move, ability, attack, and end turn. Click the uh, purple ability icon now. Description appears below on the tooltip. The Warhawk's Tempest allows him to slam multiple enemies at once. Select an enemy and then confirm your choice. All right, right there and swam. Beautiful. Warhawks just wrecking. They made a quick word for the Chieftain's bodyguards. When there is only one enemy left, players enter pillage mode. During pillage, each character moves in order and there are no more guaranteed like alternating turns between friend enemy, friend enemy. Check the initiative to see how the order has changed. Your allies will not get to move twice in a row. If the character does not move on his turn. He can rest to re regain one willpower. This doofus takes a rest. Looks like the chieftain is in some trouble. Your shield banger won't be able to finish the job with a normal attack, but willpower can be used to boost your damage. All right, let's left click to attack. Click the fist. Then stars above the fist will add willpower, so we can click that. Uh, the number of stars available each turn are determined by your exertion stat. I think that's all down here. So this is our armor. This is our strength. This is our total willpower uh, f that we can use for the whole battle. This is how much we can use per turn. And then this down here is break. The amount of direct damage you can naturally do to an enemy's armor. Okay, interesting. Anyway, because we're doing this willpower, we're going to hit for nine instead of eight. And a thwappy bappy. <laughs> Victory. All right. Now we get to do some role playing. Like a rabid wolf, that one. How did it come to this? We fool ourselves believing that peace will last. My grandfather built all this from a poor fishing village, you know. He watched the gods die, watched the chaos that followed, watched man and var slaughter each other, even before the threats arose. All we've done is traded one struggle for another. Now that there are no more threats to war against, we war against ourselves. This chieftain meant to kill me, and he's not the first. A dozen families in the city would gladly take my chair. This one had men waylaying merchants, both north and south of the city, strangling trade quite well, I would add, though he denied it to his lust. This sort of wolf doesn't stop biting because the head is cut off. It just grows a new head. I'm in a bad way, my friend. Help me finish this fight and I'll gladly send you on your way with Doppler King's tithe. Take any men you need. They're loyal. I promise you that. They will meet you down in the proving grounds. All right. It's amazing. The style of art is just really good. I love how they keep showing you how you're way taller than them. 
Only the sun has stopped, chapter one. Can't wait for my stories to, like, carry over into the future, too. Oh, I want to play one and two nonstop. You're approached by a familiar man who walks in step with you as you're leaving the Great Hall. He cuts to the chase. Eric, steward of Strand, I manage the governor's business. Ubin, isn't it? It is. The governor tells me you'll be giving us a hand. What did you have in mind? Scalfings that you didn't hack up in the Great Hall scattered after you took out their chieftain. The governor just wants to make sure that they stay down. Was hoping you'd join me at the marketplace by the docks. If there's anyone left to worry about, I know who can tell us. Hmm. Bit more tutorial, eh? Look at this little town. Look at this music. It's beautiful. Oh, I like this environment. This game's really, really good. How have I not known about this? It came out in 2014. Uh, we got six renowned, we got 100 days of supplies, we got 32 varl, zero fighters, zero clansmen, we have great morale. Currently it is day zero. Click on the market tent to visit the merchant. That's all that's really going on here. I like how we have these little guys walking into town with a couple of humans, a couple of varl. Uh, this is the market tent though. Let me handle this. You meander through rows of open-faced houses and eroded stalls. Colored canvases flap on a briny current. One man in particular blanches as you approach. Hod, I'm not in the mood today. For, for what? Talking to an idiot. <laughs> the Skelping's chieftain bled about an hour ago, Hod. So when you tell me, wait. So when you tell me what rat anus the rest of them crawled back into, nobody's going to try to kill you this time. I don't talk to... They don't talk to me. Hmm. I don't have patience for this. Hod sweats visibly, fumbling with some dirty trinkets on his table. Wait, just buy one of these. If everybody thinks I'm getting worked over every week, how am I supposed to know much? Just a little food money, yeah? Hmm. I'm going to intimidate him. I am like 18 times his size. <laughs> too lazy to even tie the uh, strings of my shirt, too. That should really tell him something. You motion to Gunnel. If you're enormous... Uh, my bodyguard is enormous. What the heck? Look how big I am. Who looms over the man like a snake over a moose. Gods, Eric. Laying it on a bit heavy, don't you think? <laughs> Where are the Skelfings? Nobleman. Up by East Wall. But that was months ago, last I know. Had skulks away with a wave of Eric Sand, or Eric Sand, gathering things from his hovel, disappearing for a while until this blows over, you figure. Your bodyguard steps forward. Are we done here? Gunulf, you were wearing green back at the Great Hall. No, just bought him while you were walking around. Why? Mm, you look like a frog. Better than an eggplant. <laughs> Touche. Gunnolf goes off to look at a more stalls. Eric, or Eric, that man of yours seems unreliable at best. A blind dog wouldn't trust Hod, but he used to be scalfing. If they're licking their wounds, they've probably gone to old haunts, not new ones. Nobleman is a... Wait, Nobleman is a mead hall? Best I can tell, the name's ironic. Listen, I know a guy who would love to put a few of these skeels or skulls in the ground. I'm going to find him. I'll meet you there. Hmm. Where, where am I going again? Nobleman is halfway up the hill towards the Great Hall. You won't miss it. Just make sure the governor remembers his promise. Double the usual tith. Tithe? Tithe. I'll remind him. All right. Up the hall to the Mead House. You arrive in front of what must be Nobleman. A few minutes later, Eric appears with a weather-beaten man introduced as Valgar. I'll point them out, Eric says over his shoulder. Ready? Yep, let's get it out. That's the spirit, says Valgard. Here we go. Valgard boots the front door open so hard it won't close again without repair. As you enter the hall, Eric is already at the head of a table, his axe drawn. Wide-eyed, drunken scalfing scamble to their find their own weapons, turning tables and mead stains in the process. Steins? Mead steins? What's a mead stein? I thought it was a mead stein. Uh, I don't know. I don't have a clue. In any event, it's a fighting time. Look at this. Look how you can see out the window. You can even like zoom in and see different things out the window because you're way up on the hill. 
That's so cool. Look at all the things in the background to look at. This guy's just hanging out here, chopping up deer and whatnot. Over here, we got some kind of... What even is that? I don't know. Uh, in any event, uh, we can deploy during this... I like how my guy just stands at the doorway, bored out of his mind. He's like, all right, you guys handle it. <laughs> uh, let's see. Not exactly sure what we have for a bit. Stonewall blocks damage to strength and armor for one round. Give will baller to allies at range. Strike adjacent enemies in a spin attack. And this guy has returned the favor. When hit by an adjacent enemy, counterattack for one arm damage. Let's get him in the front then. Uh, this guy maybe. You know what? You can have a tank possibly over here in between, and then that looks good to me. Fire. All right, so we start up first with our tank. Let's get right in the front line. Looks good. I'm going to go for Stonewall. So I think what happens here is... I'm not actually sure what happens here. I'm pretty sure, though, we don't take any damage for a number of attacks. Oh, that guy walked right up in the wrong place. If I come here, I can attack him. I don't see why not. What are our options? We don't want to rally this guy. Just go for a regular attack. Three strength or one armor? I'm going to go for the, um, the strength. Ooh, I can even pump it up to five. We get seven out of five willpower. Let's just get into it right now. Bam! Hit for five. Beautiful. Oh, look at that. He's blowing his willpower, but we're resistant because we don't care none about nothing. Amazing. All right, let's uh, swing up here. Who is this guy? Shield banger. The only thing we can do here is attack. So let's just go for it right now. Three. How much? We do have seven. We can only use one. Well... I'm just going to go for a regular three, then. No reason in spending the willpower when we'll kill him next time on the three. Ooh, look at him try to knock me down, but I'm resistant because I'm a strong guy. Can I not use my willpower to move? No, we actually have zero ability to use willpower when moving with this guy. All right, well, just move up then and start getting hit. Yeah, this is the doofus that decided to buy a green cloak in town. Uh, oh, Tempest hits your own guys? Didn't realize. Okay. Fascinate. Just end the turn there. Hit for two armor and something off the bat. Wait, did he counter armor? No, he didn't because I didn't use the special ability. All right, I understand. So I probably... Hmm, let's use one willpower here to kill this guy off to the left. Fantastic. Hot. Oh, I probably need to move. This guy only hit me for two armor. Interesting. Three damage over there, but you know what? Bam! He's down. One, two, three, four. We got six more of these guys. Interesting. Wow. Five? That's enough. I think we hit for three by default, so... You know what? Then again, let's go for six. <laughs> Only because I don't know what this other guy can do here. Oh, hit for two armor. None of this makes any difference to me, though. So here's the deal. If I attack now, I think I hit my own guy, but I'm probably fine with that. Let's try it. Let's do the Tempest. We'll attack right there. And... Thwap! Boom! Yep, we hit our own guy for two, three, one, one, one. Even that guy back there. Crazy. Not exactly sure how that works out, but that was really strong. Six, five, three. Okay, can we attack down here? No. I think I'm just going to go Stonewall. We can just sit there all day long deflecting our own friend's uh, AoE attack. Yep, resist. Two hit points. Oh, I didn't mean to end turn. Oh, no, thank God they have those uh, confirmed buttons. What was that? Like something, something purple just showed up. Lost a little bit of armor, that's fine. Three, uh, let's go. I don't even need to do four. We'll just crush him. All right, now I'm super excited. Let's hit this guy once again with the Tempest. Let's see if it hits our own guy. You know, we resisted. Woo. All right, four, two. Over there, we got three. Three, it looks good to me. Now, we're not doing our resist thing anymore. However, at this point, I don't think it matters. Like, we're really strong. You can also hit this button up here to turn everything on, but that's a little bit too much for me, I think. Works better when that's not on. Let's swing over here and attack this doofus for only one. Wow. Well, 
we do the one plus this, we can kill him with a tempest. <laughs> I like how he attacks back and just hits the shield. Uh, speaking of, two, three, boom. Yeah, we got this. Uh, it's just the very beginning. It's not all that, uh, not all that complicated yet. It's kind of so doofy with his green. Just so doofy. Like when his pants show all the way up and his skirt comes down a little bit. It's like, what is going on with this game? All right, one and one. Pillage. So now we all get to go, and this guy... Well, you know what? Our green guy here did get down to one armor and six health. Huh. Interesting. All right, well, not that that's going to make any difference here. Just smack him. We're really good at AoE, but really bad at single target attacks. Oh, we're actually in the way. I want to start sprinting around, blowing through all that stuff. It doesn't really matter. Can't really do any attacks here, so we'll just end the turn. And then lastly, swing over here from behind, opening that up. And stabby stabby. He's a dead. Alright, I think by now you guys can clearly see if you haven't played this game before. Where it's going. Imagine when I get tons of things on the map and all kinds of interesting abilities and various stuff. Plus you have your party, you have to like gear up over time and select your crew. Kind of like Darkest Dungeon. Plus 10 Renown. The only question is, can I finish one and two in four days? And the other question is, does anyone even really want to watch it? Uh, I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below or hit the like button. And that way I can decide whether or not to do more. But for now, let's continue. Eric, there they are. Gods be damned. I've got to go wash off this blood. Eric is looking out the hall's windows onto the bay. A fleet of long ships approach with sails of bold reds and blues. One banner I know well, Vognir. Next for Varl Kingship last we spoke. The other flag looks important. Yeah, important guess. See what a deal with- wait. See what I deal with all day long. Ah, things make us a little more sense. You hoped I'd have a stake in saying everything's fine here when the royal guests arrive. Not me, the governor. Now I have to make sure there are no rotting bodies of pools or entrails still in the Great Hall before they come by. Can I ask for one more favor? Hmm... Maybe. If you happen to stall our guests down on the docks, I wouldn't object. Maybe I will. Eric and Vulgard hustle from the mead house. To his credit, Eric tosses the barkeep a spot of silver for the mess. You give an apologetic shrug and go to greet the new arrivals down at the docks. <laughs> <laughs> Just eh, hey, whatever. Bunch of bloody mess. Don't can none. Look at all this. They're coming into the port. So many of them. Let's go down there and say hello because we don't really have any other options. Vognir. A familiar Varl steps onto the docks. In your mind, you recall a much younger version tramping the halls of Grafheim, abundant in purpose. Gods, Ubin, you're looking ancient comes with being old, and if there is Vognir, there must be Hakon. Must there? Still bleeding tributes from the poor and stupid old yaks. In what age do you lose a sense of shame? Your under demands it? I'll take that over lingering to death in Grafheim. Speaking of, I had no sense that you were so far from home. Just returned from Arborang, in fact, and glad for it. Hakon motions to the other ships in the bay, sails still fluttering, golden wolf heads emblazoned in red. The king of men, or someone on his behalf. The king's whelps. The king's son, Ludin. Don't you know? Scrivener? Scrivener? I don't know. We visit his capital, he visits ours. It's how you'll make alliances these days. It's a miserable waste of time. Yes, Hakon has it. I'd almost forgotten. It's a good thing you're around, Hakon. And then you're going to Grafheim. I have this distant feeling I finished my business in Strand and was heading there myself. We should caravan. We should. Give it a day. In better circumstances, I'd drink a week away, but let's just be done. Find me tomorrow at the gates. Drink a week away. 
What he's trying to say is the prince is a delight to behold. <laughs> These Varg and their humor. Where is Mogur? Akan, have him find a place to put up with the warriors. I'm heading up to meet the governor. A host of giants depart in his wake. You recognize a few. Others are strangers to you. Guess I'm off to find Mogur. See you in the morning, Scrivener. I'll be along. Oh, are we like a scribe? Is that why we're holding this quill all the time? The young prince of men ambles from his ship. He brushes off his tunic, scanning the beach with low eyelids. Ludin looks for all the world, the sort of bo boy who grew up pulling the legs from spiders. The long road back to Grafheim should be more interesting than most years, you think. All right, it's a caravan in time, friends, I think. Or we got something else to do here. Weariness suddenly settles in, and you chuckle to yourself about an odd day it has been. One of the governor's men at the Great Hall can find you a place to sleep. On the other hand, if you're going to join Vognir's caravan tomorrow, it might not hurt to share a drink with Hakon, or introduce yourself to the prince they spoke of highly. All right, uh, let's go talk to Hakon first. Sounds kind of interesting. Then we'll go on the caravan, and then we get to set up uh, some stuff and go find... I guess we have a whole world to explore? I'm not sure if it's like open world or what. Scrivener! You find Hakon in a mead house, surrounded by other Varl. Strand is no stranger to Varl, but rarely see this many. Hakon waves you over. Went straight for a flagon. Wagner's the one who agreed to pass up a drink. I wasn't invited to the governor's hall anyway. How this, like, little wind blows his shirt over, his eyes move ever so slightly. You already missed the massacre. Every year I make the rounds collecting taxes. Every year it's the human settlements that give me trouble. No surprise. What this time? When I got here, the Great Hall was already full of bodies. We added a few more. Ha! <laughs> Humans. Ah uh, yes, if I only lived as long as a Yorksfart, I might be desperate to make something of myself too. Yorks. Oh, I guess these guys live really old. That's interesting. It's not too late to start trying, Hawken. I can let slip a low chuckle. Any Varl could recount his deeds, known as he is for cutting a swath through dredge at Vognir's side in the Second War, and regularly since then. Down here, I'm a glorified bodyguard. You might have a point. Just another reason to get back to Grafheim. Soon enough, I imagine. You drink until the mead house becomes overbearing, then step back into the cool air outside. I like the little tavern music, that was kind of cool. Oh, here's the prince. He looks like a super dope, like they said. Let's go say hello, I suppose. Is this the right place? You find the prince at an inn. Guards blanket the building, including a sharp-eyed Varl who must be working for Ludin. A woman in red eventually waves you over and stands nearby, arms crossed. Greetings, Prince Ludin. Yes. You're with Vognir. I don't remember you. Not exactly. I've known Vognir a long time. I'll be joining you back to Grafheim with my guards. Ludin looks up for the first time. The woman doesn't react. Why? I work for the king, carrying ties to the capital. We crossed by chance. Oh, a tax collector. Fine company. What do you want? Hmm. Let's see. Just to introduce myself, I hope to learn more about you. I have a habit of recording history. I thought we might talk about your visit. Yeah, that sounds like a good cover. A viral historian. <laughs> I don't you already know. Your king and mine both have been practically trumpeting it throughout the cities. I've been on the road a while, I'm afraid. Ludin takes a deep sigh. Whether tired or ungracious, you aren't certain. Maybe both. A formality, mostly. Wagner came to our capital in Aberang, and now we go to the Varl's captain in Grafheim to cement this grand allegiance for the next age of men and Varl. You sound unconvinced. There's no need for it, and it's damned cold up here. You get the sense he's struggling not to complain outright. You take the opportunity to excuse yourself. Boy, that was a meeting, huh? All right, to the roads, friend. Minus one supplies. At dawn, you're awoken by a delivery of goods. At least you think it's dawn. Damn hard to tell with a sun that never moves. The governor's crest adorns the supply leathers. All there, just as promised. To your mild surprise. You wonder if Eric had anything to do with that. Plus 20 to renown. Your guards take the treasure wagon down to the gates. Vognir is already here. 
A while later, the Luden and his men appear, groggy and disheveled. Mogadir steps forward. Vogner's quartermaster, if you recall correctly, in charge of his unwieldy entourage of warriors. You know him only in passing. He asks if you're ready to depart. Well, let's roll. You follow Mogadir and join the others. Usually the smaller doors set into the gates would be enough to enter or leave the city, but the town guards have been told to push them open entirely. They mutter things under their breath that are best not heard. Perhaps the governor expected you to draw a crowd, but there's nothing of the sort. Just frustrated, tired people. It summarizes Strand well as a whole, you think. Bye, friends. Out the gates we go. Oh, look at that. Look how, ti look how tiny we are. This is amazing. There's a city way out in the background. Looks like the timer is going up here. So we're about to hit day two. Yep, there we go. Minus six supplies. Okay. Apparently every day. Barl 366, fighters 85, clansmen zero. Days of supplies 66. Oh, this is. What is this? Days two. Huh. The caravan stops for the day. A gift, says Mogur, cracking open the mead cast. From our gracious friend, the governor of Strand. Hours pass without ruckus laughter as the mead is passed throughout the camp. Hmm, that's toast to Vognir. You raise your drink, toasting the alliance between men and Varl. The others join in. Luden's expression is like a stone wall, but the others laugh at your exaggerations. Eventually, you sit down beside Vognir. Hmm. Let's, uh, chat with Vognir. Thanks for the speech, slurs of Vognir. That's it? Oh, here we go. Looks like you didn't have to miss out after all. Thanks to Mogur. I thought the damned governor would never shut up. Did he give you the history of his entire family? He tried. <laughs> then he asked me to clean up his mess. For your benefit, it turns out. But I've given the job to you, too. Gods, there's no joy in politics. Speaking of, what happens after this business with Luden? Hopefully the boy goes back to Aberang on his own. And I can take out some frustration on Dredge or something. Starting to sound like Hakon. You don't like the life of a diplomat? <laughs> don't you miss the fight, Ubin. You down your mead instead of replying. Wagner slouches and shakes his head. There's no great joy in killing Dredge, but this, pretty sure this nonsense is some scheme between the two kings to force some kind of lineage. Used to be, warriors would follow you for what you'd done. Isn't that why they follow you now? Is it? Or is it because I'm the next in line? These lines are getting muddy, old Barl. They've always been muddy, Wagner. Wagner stares into the campfire, lost in thought. You leave him to it. What a peaceful, peaceful reprieve this is. Pretty soon all hell will break loose, I'm sure. You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. <laughs> Think of that line. Where do you write? Who writes this? You rise groggily, the campsite a casualty of merriment. <sighs> oh, a casualty of merriment. Mogur is already kicking warriors awake when you spot Ludin. Stalking your direction. He sidesteps sleeping bodies. Better wake up. You nudge Wagner. You're needed. Ooh, we're needed. Ah, it's Luden. Always a pleasure. You look well rested. Wagner releases a caged yawn and receives a hard-eyed stare in return. How long to Grafheim? Ha, <laughs> we're only two days out of Strand, you know. Come, I'll show you on a map. This is about as far as I got uh, doing a single player thing. I kind of skipped most of the dialogue, though, so I wouldn't really know what's going on. But yeah, this is, I was like, holy bananas, look at this. This is a map of the world. You can explore it by dragging your mouse to pan and using the mouse wheel to zoom. Look at this freaking map. The cool thing is you can see, okay, hit check. There we go. The location of your caravan is indicated here by Ubin's icon. Wow, the map, world map has covered many locations and holds much lore. You can explore the map at any time clicking on locations for more information. So you can click over here, Bradabek Peaks. When the first of all warriors trudged north to discover new lands, the Bradabek Peaks were thought to be the edge of the world. Wow, 
What about this whole zone? Haran, the long snow fields, tall mountains, and sparse woods of Haran used to be the gathering place of dredge during the Second Great War. As Val pushed them ever northward, they took the land and settled it themselves. Huh. Almost entirely Varl. What's up here? Oh, you can see all so you can see the territories. Velka Jokel. At the Great War's end, it was the Valka, the first menders who would push the dredge so far into the north that they were no longer a threat. Some believe the Valka committed genocide of an unfathomable magnitude. Others believe the dredge were forced to return underground. For not even they can survive these bleak, lifeless ice plains. In any case, if the dredge could be said to inhabit any lands, it is those named after their vanquishers. Look at all of this stuff. What is this giant zone? Sederlon. They had such a high hopes for Sederlon, the new kingdom of Menenvarl, they called it. Rounding up anyone who yearned for a land of their own. Whole clans and families took the caravans and banners to the untamed frontier. Then the Nordfelling lake disappeared. The trees withered beneath the arctic winds and crops would not grow. Look at this little river! Sten's March. Oh, that's a road? Not content to stop in Stromland. Man, I could do this for like seven hours. Look at how many freaking things there are. East Wick. Unique that it starts as a fresh water and becomes less drinkable closer to Swartborg. What the heck? Swine is speed. This is amazing. Borsgard? What an ridiculously huge place. Rundwall. At the First Great War, men in Uvarl fought viciously for Rundwall's abundant farmlands and coasts overflowing with fish. Only with the help of the Menders would Rundwall eventually become the home of Aberen, the capital of men and Manahar, where the Menders could gather in counts. I just want to read all of like the the, the like regions or whatever. Stromland. Rundwall was once a vast nation. The civil was war divided mankind, and leader named Strom set out for the east, intent on creating a new kingdom here. The dream died with Strom, and the lands would become unified again, but the name stuck. Alright, I think that's pretty much everything. I can't seem... It doesn't seem to be like a zone out here. There is so many things to look at. Wayward Lake is amazing. Alright, let's get out of here. And let's do some stuff. We head north, then east past the forts. Grafheim's far from Strand. Going to be a long march. You should have drank last night, Luden. Why not take the ships to Skrymis... Wait. Skrymirstead. What's the point of marching? The Silverstone Bay is called that for a reason. It stays covered in ice all year. It would tear up the long ships. Too bad, though. It would have shown you all the wonders of Skrymirstead. I think. A half-sunken city crawling with dredge, Prince. Dredge and glaciers. You like glaciers? Luden exhales through the nose, a poor disguise for his contempt. He turns and bats aside the tent flaps as he goes, barking at his company in the distance. Don't poke the anthill, Vognir. He seems no happier to be here than you. Spend a few more days with the boy, old friend. You'll be looking for a tall cliff to hop off to. Luden's got a shorter wick than Hacken. Thanks, Vognir. Let's get moving. Another half day to Verdfell and we're lucky. All right. Ooh, I can actually play around here. Camp. The camp is where you manage your caravan. During travel, you can enter the camp at any time by tapping camp button on the travel HUD. While at the camp or in towns, you can upgrade your allies or equip items in the hero's tent. You can pass time by using the rest tent. Resting will improve the caravan's morale. A high morale will reduce casualties in war and affect your willpower in combat. Each passing day will use supplies, so only rest when necessary. The training tent will allow you to safely try out any characters in a mock battle. Tap leave at the bottom when you're ready to get back to the road. All right. So I don't think I want to do any training, but if we got new characters, we could play with them in there. Click on the hero's tent. Look at this. This is so cool. I like how they frame it, too. With, like, people back here in the distance. Here's our heroes. Click on a portrait to view stats, promote ranks, or to learn about abilities. Click on the ability button to learn more about the unit's abilities. Bring the Pain, active ability, rank 1. Character strikes an adjacent enemy for armor break damage before hunkering down and boosting his passive ability. Return the Favor, to return even more break damage for one turn. By using Break the Pain, you can create a forward charge that punishes enemies for ganging up against him. Interesting. Rank 1, normal break attack and plus 1 to return the Favor. Huh. Fascinate. Return the favor. Enemies who attack him lose one point of armor for each strike the character. 
Turn the favor triggers every time he takes damage from a adjacent enemy, which can make it devastating to hit him with attacks that strike multiple times. Huh. Attacks that strike multiple times, you say? Mogur, Reeled 1, Shield Master. Gunulf, Rank 1, Warhawk. We've already seen his Tempest. Hits up to two enemies, hits up to three enemies, hits up to four enemies. Massive weight to sweep his weapon around himself, hitting multiple adjacent targets. Friend or foe for normal strength damage. Tempest triggers the character's passive ability, Heavy Impact, which in turn can cause a chain reaction of destruction if he used in close quarters. Oh, keeping this character out of harm's way until late in the fight will maximize his effectiveness. Heavy Impact. The character hits so hard that any enemy standing adjacent to his target on a strength attack take one strength damage from the shock wave. That's how I was hitting people all the way through. Hitting a large target like a Varl or Dredge who takes up four tiles can potentially cause an impact across many more victims than hitting a single tile target such as a human. That's amazing! The tactics of this game are going to be crazy. Gunulf. When Ubin became the Varl King's tax collector, he was given an entourage of bodyguards to help transport gold collected across Hran. Gunulf is the only one from the original group still alive, and for good reason. Kills, one. Cool, they rank your kills. So we get 15 strength. You gotta be kidding me. Seven armor. You get low armor, very high strength. He's only he's got the, the hell? What is this? Why am I playing? Is this a music song? Like little kids? Do, 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 do. Alright, anyway, let's get out of here. Uh rank one loot in the rank one spear master. What is this down there, by the way? It's all empty, so. What's the deal with Ludin? Impale! The character skews his enemy, doing normal strength damage before kicking them away. Doing knockback and causing them to bleed if they move on their turn. A target who is bleeding will take one strength damage for each tile each tile that they move, which can be especially deadly for enemies that are moved against their will. Oh my god, I love it! I can't wait, this game's amazing! Impale and knockback, one tile, two tiles, three tiles. Embolden, each kill the character makes encourages allies to fight harder, granting one willpower to the unit and any adjacent unit. Wow, so we kill anyone, we get a unit and everyone adjacent, or we get a uh, willpower, everyone else adjacent gets a willpower as well. Amazing. And then lastly, Hakan, the rank one war master. Sundering impact. The character hits even harder than an average warrior with no chance to miss. I didn't know there was a chance to miss until now. He can wreak havoc with an additional plus one strength and also adds one break damage to the target, plus bonuses to heavy impact. Sundering impact is best used when carefully positioned to impact as many enemies around the target as possible in a single strike. Not sure I understand. Character hits even harder than him with no chance to miss. He can wreak havoc with an additional plus one strength. It sounds like it's just to a single person. Plus one break to heavy impact. This is heavy impact. The character hits so hard that any enemy standing adjacent to his target on a strength attack take one strength damage from the shockwave, hitting a large target like a Varl of Dread. Yeah, we already heard that. You can just do tons of damage. So he hits super hard. He also does a passive damage to their um, armor as well. Plus one to heavy impact, which means we can actually, once we get rank one, if we don't have that already, we can hit for maybe two damage, plus one strength, and plus one break, plus one strength, plus two break. That's ridiculous. Holy. Okay. Cool. And this is just the beginning. The tip of the iceberg, friends. The tip of the iceberg. Party roster. Turn order. Oh, I probably want to mess with that, right? So, probably want our, our tanker guy, Mogar, to be number one. Get him out in the front. Everyone starts attacking him. They all start taking armor damage. Luden's kind of like a CC guy. Let's put him like third. I think with the spear. Maybe he's going to help all people and Gunulf way at the back to come in and just slice everyone when we're done. Uterus. Now then, uh, do we need to rest? Renown, days, options, map, days of supply. I don't think we do. Everyone is fine. So let's hit the road. Weather fell. Even the name means bad weather, where frozen wind sweeps in from the bay. They tend livestock, but most are just men driven from strand with nowhere else to go. Why else would anyone stay? We won't stop long. 
I wonder if there's gonna be a murder mystery. This reminds me of the little town that I last left uh, Kingdom Come on. Where we were like investigating a mystery. By Hardeborg, that's a lot of varl for some missing cattle. What? A couple days back, sent word to Strand about the cattle. Didn't expect an army. He looks pleased with himself until it sinks in that you aren't here on his behalf. Where have your cattle gone? Wouldn't know. My boss seen men up the hills carrying them away. Don't know how many men who can hoist a whole cow by himself. Scaffing's out here, maybe. Could have a varl working for them. Not for what the governor told me. I want to take a look around and get camp set up. Peasant spits, his eyes anxiously doubting about as the caravan sets up tents. We'll be here no more than a day. There's silver for any food you've got. For hundreds of varl? Are you serious? <laughs> Whatever you're willing to sell. You thinking of squatting? Not enough room for a couple hunters here. Forget hundreds of... Shut up. Hear that? Where's Luden? <gasps> it's faint. Sounds like fighting and something else. Hawken takes off at a run. Hell yes. Let's get in. What the? It's a mystery. Clicking any tile will automatically make a path. Oh! But you can also set waypoints. Click once to make a waypoint. I didn't know that. That's super cool. Why are we- why the heck is Luden here alone? Why also is there a Varl in the ground who looks very familiar? Uh, should I run away or should I attempt to fight these guys today? Well, we've got five willpower. It does look like we have extra characters, but I can't seem to figure out where they are on the map. I can't zoom around. Uh, let's, I suppose, we'll come over here. Oh, I think it's trying to tell me to do this. Now select the next waypoint, often useful when you need to avoid certain tiles. Now, can, I don't want to confirm. Okay, fine. It's just, it's still in tutorial mode. Spearmen can attack diagonally and up to two tiles away. Well, that's fascinating. Click the top right banner to compare your stats with the enemies. Now click the enemy to target. Um, yeah, we're a little bit on the super duper weak side. Armor block strength, or armor blocks attacks on strength. For each enemy armor higher than your strength, there's a 10% chance the attack will be deflected. Oh, okay. So there's like a 70% chance that's gonna happen. Notice the chance to hit shown above. Oh, okay, I see, 50%. Okay. Attack this enemy's strength. <laughs> yeah. Deflected attacks do no damage. From here on out, you will fail catastrophically if you don't break armor. Damaging both strength and armor is equally important. Oh, God! Oh, my God! Bye, little prince. Nobody liked. Good thing I read all about your abilities. I guess he's technically not dead. So maybe that'll help. But what the heck are these weird golem thingies? What's this evil, evil music? Holy. All right. Well, we know this much. We have the ability to... Sunder or some such, right? Sundering impact. Add strength and armor damage to target and adjacent enemies. Alright, well. Three. Let's go for it. Thud. We hit for one and two. One armor, two strength. Boy, these guys are no joke, huh? I guess we're just gonna run over here with Gunuf. And we're not gonna do the Tempest because they're not uh they're not spread out or they're not close enough here for that to work. Let's just go. Wow. Holy bananas. That's insane. Alright. <laughs> One damage. Ooh, negative eight. By the way, did I, um... Difficulty. Normal. Okay, let's play on hard. What's this? Rest, move, bring the pain. Breaks an enemy's armor and punishing enemies for retaliating. Oh, okay. I remember that now. So, we want to move. Wait. Why can't we move? Oh, there we go. I can move up here, I suppose, if I use a little bit of uh, willpower. I would love to break the pain. Absolutely love it. Three. We actually only hit for two, though. Oh, no. Gunulf. Gunulf. He's actually wounded. Maybe I needed to rest to replenish his hit points. I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that their hit points wouldn't be reset automatically after every battle. All right, well, that's super good to know. Uh, maybe another Sundering Impact possibly here, or could I move around the corner? It might, it might work. 
Uh, yeah. I guess we'll just do it regardless. Let's come over here, Sundering Impact. Flap! One and two. Oh no, Gunolf! Gunolf! Oh, he's down! I'm gonna lose the first battle, I think. Let's get the shield better out and actually shielding. That would be pretty useful. And I can't really do anything else because... There we go. Ooh, he's right between both of us. Hit for three. Sundering impact. Yes. Nice. Look at that chain reaction. Minus one, minus one. That's the way to do it. Ooh, yes, 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 yes. Bring the pain for sure. Let's do it right there. I don't really need these on, I don't think. Minus one. Not a big deal. What do we have for special abilities here? Sunder. That's it. That's the only one. Woo! Look at all that armor and health. is getting ripped. Getting ripped straight off. I want to kill this guy more than anything, but at the same time... We don't have a willpower. Oh, I, oh, I see. My willpower ran out, and I probably shouldn't have been using it the entire time. Well, that being the case... Why don't we just attack this guy, then? I'm not sure if I should do the armor or not. I don't know. Let's just do strength for now. He's really close to going down. Hit for one. Negative one, because that's our ability. Whenever people hit us, we take armor off of them. Then over here, we got another two. Or, can I... Nope, can't do Sundering Impact, because we're out of willpower. Fascinate! Okay, so things that increase willpower will extend our cooldowns. Two, one, one. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. We got this. Yeah, they just they just can't handle. They absolutely cannot handle. Oh. Whenever an enemy falls in battle, one willpower star is added to your horn. Using the horn will give one willpower to the effective ally. Okay. Alright, taken care of. Now... Let's crush this little doofus. Six, oh, one, and dead. Shield Master. Fantastic. Five, and that's all we can do. Boy, do we ever hit hard. And a crushy brushy, friends. Crushy brushy. Promote. All right, I'm going to have to rest here, I think. Victory. Rewards. Achievement. Yeah, whatever. Promotion. Tempered by blood. We got a promotion. Consequences. Injured Gunnulf. Alright. Alright. Cool. Imagine all the different things that we could encounter. It's gonna be awesome. Hawken. You trying to get yourself killed, Luden? What are you doing? I was trying finding... trying to get shot in between the plates. <laughs> you never seen a dredge before, boy. What kind of idiot? Break their armor first. Where did they come from? We didn't even see them. They were just there. Haken goes to where Vognir lies face down. The future of our king lies motionless, aside from a spreading pool of blood. Vognir is dead. Chapter 2 cut with keen edge sword. I have like goosebumps. Why have I not played this game before? Oh. Storytelling. Look at this girl. Where did that thing come? Oh, where did that? No, I can't do a female voice. Stay close. I think it saw us. Look how small the arrow is. Like they're showing you how big those things are. Ooh, look how small our characters are. The deployment happens before battle. Click your units Rook and Alette to deploy them with the blue squares. Click ready to start the battle. Well, all right. Uh, we have Mark Bray. Does armor break damage? All allies within range attack the Mark target. All allies within range attack the Mark target. Okay. Then we, this is an archer back here. Puncture. 
Bonus strength damage when stationary. Thread the needle. Hits all units between the archer and the target. Doing bonus armor break damage. Crazy. All right, let's just hit go. Be careful. Don't get too close. Click a unit's portrait to see information about their abilities. Oh, you can do that? Oh, there we go. Light step. Move through allies. I think we want to mark, right? Let's mark. Do we have to be next to us? I think I do. Can I just rest to regain? I want to try it and see what happens. Starving dredge. Can we shoot over here? Did I have a ranged attack this whole time? Thread the needle. Thread the needle. Hit all... Oh, I see. Interred. Does that go on every single... No, it's just one. I have to pick the direction. Fascinate. Can we attack? The orange squares indicate the range of a unit's attack. Archers like Rook and Alette have much stronger range than melee units. Okay. So... Let's... Uh, we're gonna have to move up then. I shouldn't have stood there. I mean, I should have uh, attacked last time. Still can't quite get him, so I guess we'll just end the turn. Oh god, it's coming over. It's coming over, quick! Run! Attack! Can I really not- Oh, you have to- you have to attack like cardinally, it looks like. Can we mark at least? No, it's, that's like only point-blank range. Huh. Interesting. Oh god. Why am I running my archers right into the fray? I guess we have to move up there and do the marking. If I run away, I'm assuming there's no attack of opportunity. Doing bonus armor break damage. There we go. Finally. Arrow. One and one. Wow. We're going to have to move at least a little bit closer. There we go. Better. Ah, I see he had an axe and a bow. Amazing. I like how I'm having that female, little tiny female just tank here. <laughs> like, whatever. Probably should do the mark. I think that's kind of the idea. We'll do that next turn. Another thread the needle, though. Can't hurt. Three and six. All right, he gets to go again. That's two. We're down to one and six. If I move up here, let's try this. Mark, pray. There we go. Check. Seven, three. He's going to get to go again. He doesn't hit very hard, so that's a good thing. What's our actual regular attack here? I'm curious. Oh, do you actually have to be at range to do a, an arrow? Looks like yes. Oh, and now he just turns his uh, directive over here, which is fine by me. Can we do a regular? Oh, yeah, look at that attack. Thud dead. Whew, all right, well, I'm learning. Vic Autori, your renown grows. Feed an enemy with a hunter. We did do very good there, but... Gotta learn. Was that... a dredge? Alette looks calm before you can tell her heart is about to beat right out of her chest. It was. Let me see. Are you hurt? No. I'm, I'm, I'll be fine. When the dredge attacked your cart and the yawks bolted, it spilled most of your supplies. You could see more dark figures moving through trees when you glance that direction. All that food. That's the last we're going to get before winter. Do we... What do we do? Don't run. Let me think. Ooh, we get to decide. Forget the supplies. Let's go back to the Skorger. Skorger. If we hurry, we can gather them before more dredge appear. Do you think you can handle more of them? Uh, let's try to be sneaky and grab them. I can see them in the trees. Are you sure about this? No. We have to try. Be quick. Oh, God. What am I doing? Why? Why? Whoa. Alette calms the yawks while you frantically toss supplies back in the cart. More dredge emerge, but you manage to get the cart moving again before they can close in. The colossal figures slowly recede into the distance. Fifteen supplies. Supplies represent food and other goods used to keep everyone alive on the road. When supplies are gone, people will start to die of starvation. The more people are in the caravan, the faster supplies will diminish. 
You can see how many days of supplies you have left on the top of the screen. Most towns with less supplies to sell. Looks good. And there we go. Look how tiny we are over there. You can barely see our little cart. Minus one supplies because we only have two people before we were using minus six. So these 17 are going to last for a while. Skogur. Look at this. A tree zone. Look at these birds. Look at this snow. Look at this, like, green stuff. The contrast is beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. As we zoom into town over the little bridge. Look at the little outpost up there. This cool, colorful tree. I never I expected to see the dredge with my own eyes. What happened in the north? Already we see more between the trees as we approach our home. And the let grips my hand tight. We must find Ivor. Well, that's actually her right there. There's the let and there's Rook. And here's our ox pulling our actual supplies. That's cool that you can see the real characters. I love how they do these pass-by things here where your um, your view of what's going on is obstructed by like trees and people. I was literally out this morning trying to take photographs of exactly that, like moving, looking at the mountains, like passing over sticks and whatnot in the foreground. Ivor! The enormous of in question towers over the men in the training field. He squints as you approach. Already back, Huntmaster? Thought you'd be tomorrow. Dredge everywhere. Dredge? How did they get through Greyhorn? Must have broken through the fort. The fighters nearby have stopped spottering. They gather around you. Damn it. They'll be here soon if they're not already. You hear screams from the outskirts. People are running towards the Great Hall. Ivor turns to one of the older boys in his group of fighters. I Eagle, take a let to the Great Hall. Tell the chieftain what's happening. The rest of you gather up as many people as you can. Come on, Alette. Oh, wait, this little doofus. Little doofus. Come on, Alette. I'm a doofus boy. No, wait. I, I want to help. Uh, Let them fight, Ivor. Oh, that's a bad decision, maybe, potentially. Why not invite some goats to join us, too? You're asking for dead kids. I won't let anything happen to her. Oh, wait, no. This is Igle. I won't let anything happen to her. I'm a young lass. They'll have to deal with it sooner or later, Ivor. What now? Fuh. Igel, keep your shield up. We just hold them off until everyone's inside. Then we figure out what to do next. More shouts draw your attention to some houses atop a nearby hill. Super cool. This is amazing. Absolutely. There's the houses. All right. This is the perfect place, I think, to stop the first episode. Engage whether or not people want to see more. Oh, you can see them right here. The dreads are incoming right here on the left. Look. Super awesome. Anyway, uh, so yeah, there there you go. This is going to be like a little bit of a campaign. The actions and choices you make, I think, carry over into the second one. And then that carries over into the third one, which comes out in, I think, five days or four days from whenever this goes up. It's on the 26th, if I'm not mistaken, of July. Let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more. I want to play more. Question is, should I record it? Um, should I stream it? Or... Should I just uh, wait for the third one and play that? Because I have very little hope of actually getting through one and two before they... I could. I could do it. Five hours of video a day. You kidding me? Ain't no problem. But who the heck's got time to watch that? Especially when I'm streaming five hours a day a long war lately. So, uh, I love this game. I love it. It's so fresh and new to me. I've never seen it. Plus, it's also old, so maybe lots of people have already seen it. And I doubt that it changes very much uh, for those of you who have seen someone played it. Or play it before in the past but that being said it is the banner saga let me know if you want to see more and otherwise thanks for watching and i'll see you soon no wait i want to help uh let them fight Ivor. oh that's a bad decision maybe potentially why not invite some goats to join us too you're asking for dead kids I won't let anything happen to her. Oh wait, no, this is Igel. I won't let anything happen to her. I'm a young lass.